So the next speaker is uh, Sebastian Droeger, uh, and he will be talking about GStreamer and Rust, or how to be fast, safe, and productive. Let's give him a welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Um, so today um, I'm going to talk about, well, as you said, GStreamer and Rust. But first of all, uh, who, am, who, am, uh, who I am? Uh, first of all, I will tell you who I am. So. Um, I'm a GStreamer developer since about uh, 2006, long, long time now. And um, can you speak up a bit? Yeah, I can try. Um, so I'm a GStreamer developer since uh, 2006, uh, which is quite a long time now. I probably uh, touched every piece of code over the last years. I'm doing currently the releases, and um, I'm uh, one of the founders of uh, Centricula, a consultancy <coughs> company providing um, services around GStreamer and related software. And since um, about 2014, 2015, uh, I started experimenting with Rust and uh, uh, also with um, how we can use uh, Rust for GStreamer. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about today. Uh, in the beginning, I will introduce um, what GStreamer is. Many of you probably don't know that. Then uh, talk about um, why uh, Rust is a perfect fit for GStreamer. Um, well, um, I will explain a bit uh, what you can do nowadays, um, what, that, um, what kind of uh, projects uh, using GStreamer you can write in Rust, and uh, give some kind of um, outlook into the nearer and farer future. And in the very end, um, uh, something personal, a bit uh, my experience with Rust uh, um, for doing all of this, and um, maybe uh, this also gives uh, others uh, some idea how, um, how it is to work with Rust for these kind of projects. So uh, what is GStreamer? Um, I will only give a very, very um, high level, short introduction. If you want to see uh, details, go to the website. Um, there's lots of documentation that you can read, probably more than you want to read. Um, but from a very, very high level, what GStreamer is, is um, it's a pipeline-based cross-platform multimedia framework. It's completely open source, free software. It's LGPL licensed. and um, there's no big company behind it. There are lots of, uh, well, lots of bigger and uh, smaller companies uh, that are dri driving it, but most, um, most of uh, the development is really something that is community-driven. Um, it's quite widely used um, nowadays, also commercially. Um, you can uh, find many applications using it, uh, TVs, drones, cameras, all kinds of things in the cloud. And um, it's running on uh, Linux, Android, iOS, macOS, Windows, basically everywhere where you have some kind of C compiler and uh, a standard C library. And um, it's not at this point used only for multimedia related things. Um, there are also people using it uh, for other stuff. Um, for example, the LIGO project that um, was detecting the gravitational waves, they're using GStreamer for their data processing, and that, that doesn't have anything to do with multimedia at all anymore at that point. So um, I said uh, GStreamer is uh, pipeline-based. What does that mean? So um, in GStreamer, the basic components that you have um, are so-called elements. Um, there's something that are, um, that are processing uh, media data or data in general, and you connect them to other so-called elements. And um, each of these elements in the end is doing one little task. So for example, what we have here is um, a very small uh, pipeline that, is, uh, that could be used for playing a, a video file. So you have one element that is just reading from a file. Uh, in this case, another element that is uh, splitting the file into the um, audio and video parts. Then you have uh, decoders for the audio and video, and in the end, it goes to the speakers or the screen. And um, well, this is a playback example, but um, you could also imagine that um, in the beginning, you have an element that is outputting the uh, video from your camera, um, the audio from your um, uh, microphone, or you um, could have an input that uh, somehow reads over the network. You could send data out over the network. In the end, each of these elements, they could do anything they would like to do with um, the data. And um, you're taking all these little components, put them together, build uh, bigger uh, components out of them, and in the end, you have something like Lego, and you can build anything you would like to out of this, out of small little components. And um, well, in this picture, it all looks uh, quite static. But um, if you're actually uh, writing code doing these things, you could also change um, the topology of the pipeline graph at any point in time 
if you want to or if you need. And um, the general philosophy of uh, GStreamer is that uh, we provide some kind of toolbox for higher level multimedia processing. It's not a finished solution for anything, but it's something that allows you to build solutions for anything you would like to do. And um, the, uh, the, ba the basis is um, that um, we have some kind of um, flexible, extensible design that is based on simple ideas, like what we saw before with the pipelines. It's a very generic API. The core GStream API does not know anything about multimedia. It doesn't know anything about video or audio. That's something that is uh, added uh, in other components. And um, the main focus is uh, on making it very easy to um, embed GStreamer into other things uh, in both directions, to uh, make it easy to embed GStreamer in applications, in other frameworks like uh, Qt or WebKit. They are, um, for example, able to use GStreamer for the, uh, their multimedia needs, but also on the other side, um, to make it easy to embed existing uh, multimedia solutions um, into GStreamer like uh, FFmpeg, OpenCV. We're not uh, redeveloping the world. We may try to make use of uh, whatever is out there already. And um, the target systems are everything from embedded systems upwards. And I said GStreamer itself doesn't know anything about audio and video. Everything is added via plugins and we well, have some kind of batteries included philosophy here. Um, there are more than 250 plugins provided by GStreamer if you um, just get um, the, um, the source code and build it. And uh, there are also plugins that are reusing existing libraries uh, like FFmpeg, OpenCV, and what I mentioned before. And uh, in addition, uh, plugins that allow you to use um, uh, things like um, on your um, embedded device, the hardware codecs, or um, uh, to use um, cameras and stuff like that. Um, the other thing here is uh, GStream itself is uh, completely written in C at this point, but nobody wants to write C. So um, we provide um, bindings for many other languages like Python, C Sharp, C++, Java, Go, D, and well, also Rust. I wouldn't be here otherwise. And um, yeah, so um, what GStream is not. Um, it's not a media player or playback library. It's not a codec or protocol library or not a transcoding tool or not a streaming server. Many people seem to think that that's not what it is, but it's something that can be used for building all these things. It's something more generic. Well, and I say it's not a playback library, but nowadays we also include, include a little play, playback library to make uh, your life a bit easier if you want to just implement a playback uh, application. But it's not the main focus. So now let's talk a bit about Rust and why GStreamer, uh, uh, why, why for GStreamer Rust is uh, something like the perfect fit. Uh, well, first of all, we have the usual suspects, uh, the memory safety, the fearless concurrency, and that we have something like, um, that is a modern language, not from the 70s anymore, and something that has uh, modern tooling. Um, so um, if I say here memory safety in the past in GStreamer, what we had is um, uh, a couple of CVEs, um, many uh, bugs um, related to memory safety, uh, which might not be uh, really uh, security related, Often they are, but it might also be just something that is annoying. If you watch a movie, for example, you don't want it to stop in the middle just because something is crashing. And uh, most of these uh, bugs would be something that would never have happened with Rust. Sure, there would be other bugs, but at least not those. Um, the other thing is uh, GStima is heavily multi-threaded. Uh, as an application developer, you don't really see that, but internally everything is running in different threads. In a normal playback application, you easily have uh, tens of threads. and it's very annoying to do this kind of development in C, and Rust can help here. Um, the last part, um, well, I said everything is written in C. Nobody wants to write C. Even worse, uh, in the case of GStreamer, it's uh, using GObject, lots of macros, very um, hard and difficult to learn. And uh, using Rust could make everything uh, much more convenient to use. And ideally, it would also allow us to find uh, new developers interested in uh, using or developing for GStreamer because new developers, they want to, uh, to have fancy tools. They don't want to learn this uh, weird C and GObject stuff. They want something more done. And um, similarly, um, Rust uh, is perfect for um, uh, in the context of GStreamer because it does not have any runtime. It does not have any garbage collection and well, the keyword zero cost abstractions. Um, because our goal is to run on uh, everything from low power embedded systems where you can't really af um, afford 
a big runtime or a garbage collection up to anything that is uh, huge. And uh, in general, whenever you do something uh, with multimedia, you want to be able, for example, to um, have control over where things are allocated, when are they allocated, when are they um, released again. And yeah, in the case of Rust, um, what also is uh, quite uh, useful or nice is that everything uh, in the end is compiling down to very optimized code. You don't have something like a, um, yeah, like, uh, something like a, a interpreted language behind that. It's all very fast and low level. And the last part that I personally like very much is that um, the ownership model um, for things like uh, video frames uh, or in general media data and all kinds of other um, processing related things inside GStreamer, um, the ownership model of that uh, maps perfectly to um, the ownership model of Rust. And um, so far from all the languages uh, that we support, Rust is the only language where this mapping uh, is really one-to-one. Um, -one. And uh, in the end, uh, if you know a bit uh, um, the arc type in Rust, uh, it has something um, that allows you to do uh, at runtime uh, copy on write. So, um, uh, you can check uh, with this uh, reference counted uh, container thing if you are the only owner. If you are the only owner, you, you can uh, write to the thing. If, you're, if not, you might have to take a copy. And this is exactly um, how um, uh, the uh, basic types in GStima are working. If you're the only owner, you're allowed to do whatever you want with it. Otherwise, uh, you might have to take a copy instead. And um, the nice thing here uh, with Rust is that, well, we have that all in C. In C, you have to call all kinds of functions manually. In the case of Rust, uh, the compiler is making sure that you don't forget to do these things. And to uh, some degree, it's also all happening automatically. Um, so then let's talk a bit about uh, using GStreamer from Rust, what is possible at this point. So the first thing that you might want to do and what the majority of people using GStima are doing is writing applications. Um, so at this point, we have um, almost complete uh, bindings of the GStima core and uh, lots of the helper libraries available. Um, it's all based on the um, infrastructure that uh, GTK RS is providing. It's also using the same code generator to generate most of the bindings code from um, the API metadata that uh, GStima is providing. And well, you can find the code here. It's um, in the end providing some kind of uh, safe and uh, more or less idiomatic bindings uh, to the GStreamer API. Um, if you know GStreamer, you can uh, probably easily learn the bindings because in the end, all the functions are called the same, all the um, objects are called the same. It's just uh, a different language. Um, but different uh, to um, C, you actually have something that is uh, safer or in this case, uh, actually memory safe um, to use. Um, personally, I use uh, the bindings now for everything I can, including uh, well, test cases uh, that I have to write, even for things when, if, the, uh, if there's some kind of bug reported in GStreamer and I need to write a test case, I'm just writing the test case in Rust because it's much more convenient and faster. And because it's uh, so close to the metal, the debugging uh, of things uh, that are actually inside GStreamer from a Rust application that's uh, just like if you, um, it's as if you had uh, written the test case in C, there's no, no heavy um, um, runtime or anything in between. Um, and this stuff is all um, stable and ready to be used. You can also find it on uh, crates.io. Um, it works at least on uh, Linux, Mac OS and uh, Windows. I didn't try it anywhere else. I would assume that it also works elsewhere. Um, the other part um, that is very important for GStima is that uh, all the functionality is provided via plugins. And um, with the code that you can find here, you, um, you can find uh, some kind of uh, infrastructure that allows you to write plugins for GStima in Rust. Completely uh, plain Rust. They are, um, for writing the plugins, you don't have to use any macros, um, any weird language constructs or anything. You just have to implement uh, a few traits, then impl uh, implement uh, the um, functions of the traits, and that's it. Uh, you also don't have to use any unsafe code unless you want to. And it's really convenient to um, write GSMR plugins like that. Um, 
of course, not everything is perfect. Uh, as I said, GStreamer is based on the object, so there's um, uh, some kind of um, object-oriented uh, paradigm behind that. So in GStreamer, there's uh, lots of inheritance happening. Well, it's kind of emulated uh, in this infrastructure with uh, traits. It's not perfect, but it works. And it's not as ugly as uh, I would have expected from uh, before I started this. So um, what is uh, currently available um, in, as plugins um, written in Rust is um, uh, FLV Demuxer, which is um, the container format that uh, was used by Flash in the past. There's an HTTP source that is using um, Hyper. There's some audio and video filters available. Um, there's a Amazon S3 source and sync available. Um, in other repositories, there's a start of an animated GIF decoder, a VA API sync, and all kinds of things that I probably don't even know about. It's not complete yet. It's in the very early stages. But nonetheless, it's uh, useful already, and uh, you can use it to write GStreamer plugins to extend GStreamer with new functionality. And all these plugins, uh, well, while they are written in Rust, they will work in any GStreamer application, no matter what language this application is written in. So for the future, of course, the plan is to write more Rust, to write less C, especially new plugins. Uh, if possible, uh, it would be good to have them written in Rust now. And um, uh, some of the ideas that I have is uh, to write uh, some, uh, well, a, pl um, a plugin about, um, around Rust AV, about um, which we will have a talk afterwards. Um, there are various uh, codec libraries already available in Rust. There's um, a FLAC decoder for the FLAC audio format. There's a Vorbis decoder. Um, there's the start of an AV1 video encoder available, some subtitle decoders. And it would be nice to wrap all these existing Rust libraries in um, a GStreamer plugin, because then um, every user of GStreamer would have something uh, safer available, something that is not uh, wrapped around um, decades old uh, C libraries that nobody's maintaining anymore. So that would be very, very nice. Uh, the other thing um, would be to write more applications, more useful applications in Rust. Currently, there are not that many out there. People are just starting to use the bindings. And all of this is something where you can also get involved. If you're interested in this uh, kind of stuff, just uh, Look at uh, the existing um, code, look at the ex ex uh, existing examples. If you have any questions, ask me. Um, all this is something that I really care about, and if you need help with that, just ask for help. Um, what we are not going to do at this point is uh, to rewrite GStreamer and Rust. It's a lot of code. Nobody is going to have the time for rewriting all that. But in the long run, um, if uh, we continue, uh, continue to see that uh, Rust is uh, really the perfect fit, uh, core GStima components could be rewritten in Rust, but that's all in the long run. First of all, applications and plugins, which is already a well, huge part. And uh, also now would be the perfect time for you to start writing GStima applications and, plug and plugins in Rust. All what you need is available already. And also people that didn't touch GStreamer before because oh, this is all C, this is weird G-object stuff. You can also start now if you prefer Rust. Um, so I don't have that much time left, so I will speed up a little bit. Um, so my Rust uh, experience so far. Um, as said before, I'm using it uh, for my own projects wherever possible. We, um, at, Centric at Centricular, we are also using it uh, for uh, various client projects by now. Um, it's mostly uh, little applications or uh, plugins. And for myself, everything uh, is much, much more enjoyable to write in Rust than in C. And also more enjoyable, uh, or also um, from what I saw so far, Rust is much better, uh, or yeah, much better suited uh, for this kind of applications than any of the other languages I tried before. Um, some things that I noticed, though, is that people are generally very afraid of unsafe code. So what um, I notice is that you really shouldn't be that afraid of unsafe code, especially if uh, your alternative would be to write something in C. In C, everything is unsafe. It's just not written on, uh, on it. So if you really have to use unsafe code, don't be afraid to do that. Just do it, but wrap it in safe abstractions. And uh, before you do something very complicated and never get your code finished, it's better to do uh, something unsafe, especially if it's uh, impossible to do otherwise, like uh, for FFI or for um, optimizations. Or in some cases, if you implement your own data structures and have um, 
situations where you can't possibly t um, convince the compiler that what you're doing there is safe. These cases exist and, well, use unsafe code if you have to. Another thing I notice is that uh, people are looking at uh, Rust projects and also, for example, the GStreamer bindings, and they have a million dependencies, and uh, people coming from C are usually very uh, afraid of that because dependencies, that's something very difficult. You somehow have to compile all that, and it's other people's code. It might not work properly. You ha might not have a way to fix it. So far, my experience uh, with Rust in this regard is... Uh, quite the opposite. It's very easy to depend on something new. It's very easy to create your own fork of that um, if you have to fix something and the maintainer is not available. But what I noticed so far is that um, all the projects that I'm uh, depending on, the, main, uh, the maintainers are very active, very friendly and helpful. Even if I don't want to fix anything in there, usually they are interested in fixing it. And otherwise, usually the code is kind of clean. You don't have the situation that you have in C that you might use a library that was written 20 years ago in a code style that nobody would use nowadays anymore, and it's just impossible to read. But I guess that's just because the language is uh, kind of new. And the other part is uh, people shouldn't be really afraid of uh, performance penalties uh, for using higher level abstractions, especially things like iterators. They look like complete magic, but in the end, they compile, compile down to very uh, fast and optimized code. So um, in general, what I saw is don't worry so much about optimizing things in the beginning, just write readable code, and you will notice that for most things it, it is already as optimal as possible. And uh, well, in general, as usual, when uh, you optimize in the end and you measure first what you want to optimize. And what I saw so far is that um, most of the things that I was writing, even uh, the inner processing loops of uh, um, uh, audio filters, for example. In the end, uh, the assembly that the compiler is outputting, that's basically the same thing that uh, a C compiler would have output, or sometimes even better. But not everything is perfect. The language is uh, continuously improving, but there are still many um, well, uh, open constru construction sites. And uh, for myself, I have a little wish list of things that I would really like to see in uh, stable Rust in the near future. And this would be all these uh, little, little items. Um, so everybody who ever wrote a little bit of uh, Rust code probably saw that um, at some point you have to fight with the borrow checker, and the non-lexical lifetimes are something that, is, uh, that um, are going to improve this situation a lot. And, well, it's in nightly already, as far as I remember. So it uh, should be stable at some point in the future. We will see. And other things are um, support in, um, in stable Rust releases for um, SIMD instructions, which is currently not available, available. something which uh, would make uh, many multimedia processing tasks much, much faster. It's something that is available in Nightly, but ideally I wouldn't like to use Nightly. And another thing would be uh, the ability to use custom allocators. Um, also something that is in Nightly, but not stable yet. All the other parts are something that is planned or that is not even planned yet. We will have to see. I think um, Luca, who is uh, doing the next talk, will also talk about these items in more details. And with that, I'm done. Uh, yeah, thanks. Any questions? Well, um, so the question um, was that uh, um, he was talking to someone before who was uh, writing GStreamer code and uh, why they don't use Rust. And the answer was um, currently it's impossible to um, uh, submit Rust GStreamer plugins uh, to um, the existing GStreamer source code modules, which is true, unfortunately. But uh, for that, the, uh, at least my plan in, uh, in the near future is that uh, we will have a new um, plugin module called, I don't know, GST, GST plugins RS or something like that, where there is already the start of that. And um, then you would just have another module that has all the Rust-based things. Main reason for that is, uh, well, that, uh, that it can't be merged in the existing um, modules is uh, that, well, you have to convince people that uh, this new language is something that uh, 
um, is not going to make their life more difficult to have inside the main source code modules. And also, currently the build system is um, all auto tools or Meson based, and uh, building um, Rust code from there is not trivial. So something else that is separate and completely cargo based uh, would be mu much nicer. But the goal is uh, to have something like an official Rust plugin mod module where all the things are um, collected. Some of the plug official plugins replaced by Rust versions in the future? Probably. Um, so uh, the question was uh, if I see um, existing GCMR plugins replaced by um, Rust versions of them. And uh, yes, I think so. Um, there's uh, one that is um, the FLV demuxer that I mentioned earlier. That's uh, almost feature equivalent with the existing one that is written in C. And that could very well replace it. But in the end, we don't really have to replace it. It, uh, it is enough if it exists as an additional demuxer. We could uh, give it a higher priority so that whenever it is installed, it will be used. And otherwise, people who don't want to worry about uh, how to compile this weird Rust code, they could just uh, continue using the C version. But yeah, same thing with the HTTP source that I mentioned before. The goal is to make it feature equivalent with the existing one written in C. And then it would also be a replacement.